Good afternoon and welcome to Resident Arcade. It is Wednesday night and we are live. As you can see, we've got Lou and Sam with me today. And no Stee, unfortunately. Stee is uh, otherwise engaged tonight. Yeah. So those of you who are new to the show, uh, this is a show about games. We talk about games for a couple of hours every Wednesday night at 7.30. And um, traditionally, we start off with just talking about games we played this week moving on to the news and a, a list section later on so guys have you played anything this week um go on sam since you weren't here last week what have you played oh, you got two um, weeks to fill in. i've gone i've gone back to the witcher 3 which i talk about when we talk about the updates and stuff so it's not really that major it's just the witcher 3 it's good i've i've got a little bit like i did with the other two arkham games i got a bit addicted to arkham knight and so i've completed it 100 percent of it now i haven't done all the there's these like virtual reality challenge rooms you can do hmm. i haven't really done all those but all the main quests in the story and everything i've done all of that now all the riddler really. trophies i imagine you've done as yeah. well yeah all the riddler don't, trophies don't, don't spoil it too much because i mean i've i've i stopped um last time we talked in fact last time you were on the show i i stopped playing it because i'm waiting for them to release this patch uh, and hmm. apparently they're not going to release it for a while again i think we've got some news about that later on planned for okay. august it says actually so yeah. There, um, I quite, I quite enjoyed the story to it. Um, I, I still feel a little bit the same way about the Batmobile that I did at the beginning. That I love the fact that the Batmobile's there because Batman's got a Batmobile. But the way that you have to keep fighting these unmanned tanks, it takes you a little bit out of of, of Batman for me. Like for a, for the first two games that really were about be the Batman. Mm. This feels like you're not being the Batman, but you're being a tank. I suppose Rocksteady had to provide some kind of challenge when you're in the Batmobile. Uh, I mean, yeah. it, it's quite easy from the bits I played in the Batmobile. It's quite, and I played it on the hard setting. It gets fucking hard. It yeah. gets hard, mate. It gets so hard. Okay. Because right. you, get, you get to a point where you've got, like, you, you go, right, here's a... You get to a, a, a certain section, you've got to, like... Oh, have we lost Sam? Oh. Oh, we've lost you Sam already. Okay, so Lou, uh, while Sam recovers, can you tell me? Can you tell me what you've played this week? Um, so the only game I've played is with you, and that's Terraria. Uh, do you haven't played anything else? I haven't played anything else, I'm afraid. No. Sorry, Sam, we lost you. Then I think you're back now. Yeah, apparently I am. Um, yeah. Okay, sorry. Let Sam finish. Oh, yeah, the, the, Let so Sam you, finish, yeah, and just, then we'll talk about Terraria. <laughs> yeah, so you go to a little area, and it'll be it'll be really small, and you've got like um like a red invisible bar barrier to fight the tanks and you can't yeah. go outside that or you fail and then just 50 fucking tanks are all on you with little beads of shots on you and you're like i can't do anything i can't <laughs> move i can't think that, i, I can't avoid getting shot to death i do find i did find them the, the little mine bits a little bit more difficult than just generally driving around but i haven't found them to be too challenging yet but just, just driving around the city is fine. Like when you encounter tanks randomly out in the city, it's easy. You just kick the heads in. But it's when you're in the situations where you've got loads of them on your position and you've got to stay in a really confined space and fight mm -hmm. them. Um, very difficult. You can upgrade the Batmobile, and you have to upgrade the Batmobile. It's almost more important than upgrading the other Batman abilities. Yeah. Um. So, as much as it was fun, that was a detractor. Uh, I did quite enjoy the story. They sort of said that the Arkham Knight was a completely original character and they kind of lied about that. I don't know where you're up on your Batman mythos if you'll get who the Arkham Knight is, but I clocked it quite early on. They leave a couple of clues for you. I don't. It was tell all me, uh, tell, don't. Don't tell me who it is and don't tell the audience, not, but I'll, uh, I haven't, I don't know. I'm not, that, I'm not that big on the comics, etc. Well, some people were annoyed about that and I thought, actually, if they were going to do... It's quite it's quite an important Batman story arc in general, and if the the way they tackled it, I thought was a nice way of doing it in their own world. So I quite quite liked it. I thought the story was quite good. I love the way the Joker was used. Like I said, um, you know, there's little things like you look at a poster, just randomly look at a poster of the Joker's face on it. You look away and look back, and it's back to normal again. Hmm. Or like some of the gargoyles will have joke faces on. All, all that kind of stuff. I really really enjoyed uh, and the little. The way the Joker's just pecking at you, because you know he's inside your own head. Yeah, yeah. So he's just picking up all Batman's insecurities, all of Bruce Wayne's insecurities, all the guilt that he feels about every time he's not going to save someone. I love his little digs at it, the parents' death and stuff as well. I love I love the fact that he's constantly having a little bit of a pop at him. I just love it. Yeah, so yeah. cruel. So yeah, Arkham Knight. Um, anybody that enjoyed the first two uh, Arkham games really should give it a go. If, you, if you've got it on console, probably better. If not, wait for the patch. It's genuinely... 
good fun. A little frustrating with the Batmobile at times, but still got all the really cool stuff that you remember about those other games. I said, I've, I was really enjoying it. I just want to enjoy it more than I was, if you know what I mean. It's not that it, it was too detrimental. I just don't, mm. uh, the, the, the issues I was having, I just, I'd rather I was, I was driving around in the Batmobile at 60 FPS rather than 30. That's, that's mainly my issue with it. Because uh, mm. everything else is fine when I'm doing fights and when I'm uh, inside buildings and even when I'm flying around the city, it seems okay. It's just when I'm in the Batmobile and that's quite a big portion of this game. So I don't yeah, really want to be uh, waiting. Uh, anyway, so August, hopefully at some point we'll get a patch. I'm not in a rush. I'm not it's in a quite rush. a long wait though, isn't it? It's quite well, a long wait. Well, we're at the end of July now, so it could be any time in August and I'm away for on holiday in August sometimes. I so. meant I meant from their point of view, but then the game's been out now for like three weeks. Well it's maybe. it's not been out on PC, they've they've removed it from stores, so it's not uh, it's been retracted and it will go back on sale, so I imagine I don't even know actually if they'll be doing another advertising campaign, maybe. Probably not. They've probably just lost out on this. They'll have had one chance. Yeah. So any you've not played anything else then? So just I've gone back to The Witcher and been like, ah, Witcher, I mm. forgot how much I love you. <laughs> so yeah. I've just gone back to The Witcher. I was reading some uh, articles about The Witcher. Um, some guys saying similar stuff to what Lou was saying, but more coherently, obviously, um, about it basically being, they, they force you down this central central route. You know, it's basically you, even, it's a linear game that has an RPG kind of, a feeling to it but you are a witcher but I, again i don't have a problem with that i don't have a problem with role playing a witcher and being mint at being a witcher you know but uh there was a, they also mentioned the other thing that you said which i i still disagree with uh lou they've mentioned that you um it, it, the world isn't enticing you don't feel like you want to go and do something when you're walking past things whereas i i see I something do. in the distance and i'm like i'm going go gonna go see that I was, I'm like that with games generally, but the witch's world seems to be quite mundane and quite realistic. And like, if you walk through fields and farmlands in real life, it kind of looks like the witcher. <laughs> Whereas I, well, I want to play a game and be in a fantasy world. Uh, when I walk around Skyrim, for instance, it feels like there's, there's three or four different climates as you walk through Tamriel. Uh, mm, there are different climates when you get to the Skelligarals, which is a fair bit later on. Uh, the climate is quite different. You're more snowy, as Chris said. You get more mountainous kind of places. A lot of the Velen bit is very. I will give you that it's quite sort of samey, but yes, it is more realistic because you're not going to get three different climates in a 16 mile radius. Like you're not, but you kind of play that. games to get that, and I really like that in games. I like the mm. the um the, the the areas in World of Warcraft where you'll kind of walk and suddenly be in a a kind of haunted forest, and you'll walk a bit further, and you'll be in you know, a different kind of place with its own colour scheme, its own enemies and stuff. I, I love that but aspect of RPGs. I like the fact that The Witcher 3 has got... You're right, it does feel more realistic and it, it feels less fantastical. I think that's probably mm. how I'd describe it. But I like the fact that they've put so much effort into making the world feel unique everywhere. Nothing feels samey. You can't give it... You can't say that about it. I can say the inns all look the same, pretty much. It's only in Velen, anyway. Um, well, yeah, because they're in Velen, but when you go to other... Yeah, but every inn is No, they don't have the same, same. layout. They, they might have some they same... They don't have the same, same layout, but they do have the same textures and the same same stuff inside, and it's very... The same applies when you go to Skelliger. All the wind, all the, all the villages are similar. In fact, all the different aisles have different uh, different types of buildings, etc., but only they have slightly variations. But I, I, I see where you come from, but I mean, that is nitpicking. You've got to say, I'm, when, you, when I'm talking about building a world, yeah. being a developer, building a world, you look at games like GTA V or, or things like that, even though they've got similar prefabs, that's an optimization thing more than anything, it still feels unique when you've got a different areas of the world. Yeah. And the same goes for The Witcher. I think there's a very good job of that. Whereas you play something like, again, I know these are old games, but Oblivion, Skyrim, you went into a cave and you could blatantly see all of the corner pieces and all of the straight pieces that were mm. all the same, even if they'd put them together slightly differently. Skyrim did a good job of that, but it still had a very similar feel. When he went into a Daedric Ruins, it was all very similar. You had different layouts sometimes, but it still, they did a good job of putting the kits together but it still yeah. felt similar. But I don't feel that in this. I feel like every cave is unique and every cave, every building, um, every tower that I go to feels unique and every side quest that I go into, every ruin that I visit feels different. 
quite a lot of the little caves feel very same. Yeah, I have to agree with Lou on that one. When you, the little caves, like when you might go and, and find a chort or something as a Witcher contract, a lot of them are like same kind of entrance, same open battle area where you fight the bad guy and a little tunnel to get out the other side, done, and a couple of I, chests. I, I a lot of those that. are very same. I haven't found that at all. I found every cave to feel unique. Like there's 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 a couple I can think that are very are very unique. In fact, there's one that's a, a tall sprawling cavern that I went into to fight. I found some guys in there, and they'd been trapped in there by a, a wyvern or something like that, or two wyverns, um, or forktails, I can't remember. And and you had to fight them to get out of the cave. And then there's other. I don't know. I don't. I don't feel that. I do feel all right. The staggle, the staggle tights, and the staggle mates. Um, I have learned how to say that since last time, but I'm not. Gonna say, I'm not going to say. You haven't. No, you haven't. You haven't. Um, uh, the, 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 the the all right. Yes, they do reuse prefabs, but not. Excessively, or that it feels that the layout feels different to me. I don't know. I'm not even just being a fanboy about it. I believe this, genuinely believe this. I think they've modelled quite a realistic world, but the real world isn't not as interesting as a fantasy world. And I like fantasy. It's a, it's the same reason why. I, I guess this is one of the big reasons why I'm still find it quite hard to jive with it because it's sort of low fantasy although it's got high fantasy um elements like magic and monsters and stuff like that it feels very grounded in reality it's one of the things i actually like about it um mm. it's one of the it's one of the things i would in some ways uh, attracted me to game of thrones to just to go tangentially a little bit was that game of thrones is a, is a fantasy series but the tv show and the first book start out the same way with a you know um a mystical ice like dude killing some blokes in a very fantastical way and then it cuts to kings and people and, and family lineages and real stuff just real people living lives getting by and the fantasy thing takes a massive back seat for a long time and they go we're going to focus on world building character and all that kind of stuff and i think the witcher does that a little bit as well it's got fantasy you've got creatures that you can fight in it but it's a lot of it's about real people working on farms having jobs I all this kind of shit, like kings and wars and all that kind of stuff that I quite like. I still feel that every single character in the game, even though the, the characters or the, the models can be quite samey and similar now, I've played it a lot. I st uh, repeating, rather. I, I still feel that every single person has... They've done a very clever thing in that they've got a little bit of story for each one. The, the writing is very clever. They've got enough to, to keep you interested in doing the fetch quests, which are hidden very well. There is a lot oh. of repeating of, right, you have to do a Witcher contract, use your Witcher senses to find some trails, follow the trails, find the, the a load of dead bodies, find another clue, then go to the next place. That, there's a lot of that, and that's yeah. probably my only major criticism of the game. It does feel very samey in that respect, but everything else, I feel like the world... Feel... When you were just talking then, Sam, about Game of Thrones, it just made me think about, and I'm not a massive fan, but um, of soap operas. Soap operas are massively... Um, popular they are based on real life even though a lot of the things are kind of concentrated into one family you know you'll get mm. a lot of tragedies with one family but it, that you have to be able to do that in order to tell stories but that that they're very very popular lots of people enjoy watching soap operas because they're they're, they're people living out the real lives. I'm not saying the witch is like that in any way, shape, or form, because, you know, I just like the role-playing element of being a kick-ass witch and being able to knack someone, knack, knack loads of beasts, you know? I, uh, just to talk a little bit more about the witch, and then we could probably get off it, because we've talked about it for, like, seven weeks now or something. Yeah. Um, it's cool, it's cool. We've got, there's a lot to talk about, but um, I, I was going to post it in the, in the news articles, and I forgot about it because I saw it a while ago. Uh, a YouTube channel that I quite like called Extra Credits, who used to be on Penny Arcade and The Escapist, mm -hmm. did uh, a little video. They do little videos about games, and they did one about The Witcher saying it's actually the best uh, hardball detective game that's ever been made in terms of the way it's structured. Is if you t if you t if you transplant Geralt and everything about that into a hardball detective narrative, it totally works. Like he is um, a hardball detective. Is usually somebody who's like quite tough and honest and has a sense of honour, but is always on the outside, has some sort of history of, of, of either war or something, or being a policeman, that yeah. makes them not quite trusted. So he's perpetually an outsider, going around and try and often try to be duped by people, uh, going around and solving problems, but not necessarily being involved in people's lives. But and he sort of talks the, about like... Having the experience well, to kind of sol you know, solve the, pro the problem in the right yeah, way. Yeah, have, having the, the sort of the... the 
the the wish to get things done properly. Yeah, uh, that quite, they made quite a compelling argument for it. Even though it's a fantasy game, you are essentially like a hardball detective. He's very gruff. He's got a very dry sense of humour, which any like Raymond Chandler like detective guy has totally got that. Uh, so it was quite interesting. And maybe look at Geralt in that world in a new way. And I'm, hmm. I would imagine if Steve was here, he could enlighten us a bit more on whether the books are like that or not, or if that's not really oh a my thing. God. Or... I've just realised that the Littlest Hobo and Black Beauty are both hard-boiled <laughs> <laughs> stories. <laughs> the Littlest Hobo. <laughs> they are, though. He goes around and solves people's problems, but he's always an outsider and he always has to move on at the end of it. So is Tintin, then. Well, Tintin's actually touts himself as a detective, doesn't he? A little yeah. Twat, yeah, yeah, yeah. Little twat he is. Little Tintin. Right. Yeah, um, that's yeah, yeah. So I mean, we've got we might as, you know what? Let's mix it up a bit and let's talk about the Witcher news while we're talking about it, just to get it out of the way. Um, so the Witcher had some new free DLC this week, which I haven't tried yet. I think it's literally come out in the last few days or today, maybe. And it's new animations, new um, uh, death animations. Again, it's cool. Still releasing it. Not that asked about it. It doesn't really change my gaming experience that much. But the major news is the 1.07 patch is now out, and that has got all of these new. Cool little new features. You've got loads of new inventory management stuff, which I have to be honest hasn't affected my playing experience that much at all. Um, it's got a, a new control system that you can turn on and off. I've played with it a little bit. I switched them on and off, and you know played between the two styles and s tried to figure out the difference. Basically, the animations just stop quicker, and instead of you letting go of the control, uh, letting go of the controls, and he and he's still moving an extra meter or two, he stops almost dead um still have problems and that you still run into walls occasionally and and do things that you shouldn't but it's a lot it easier ad to control yeah it does address that thing that sam said when it first came out which is that he sometimes kind of runs around willy-nilly and he's hard to control it does seem a lot more responsive now the one the one quest that i was complaining about that was dead in my quest list that was just sat there and i couldn't do anything with it i had no markers i didn't know where to go i had no no indication i think it was called close novigrad close city uh, it's now failed it's in my failed list <laughs> so i'm happy um Cheers, CD Projekt Red. You've done me proud. Um, I'd rather have a failed quest than a, than a quest that doesn't work. Yeah, or a quest that sat there going, finish me, finish me, but I can't, I can't do anything. But yes, I'm, I'm happy now. Um, I don't know how I failed it still. I, don't, I, I was doing the quest and then suddenly I just couldn't do anything else the next time I tried to do I don't know. Anyway, um, trying to think what else was in it. Any, anybody else remember what's in the 1.07 um, patch? I, I've uh, got, I think I've had the patch, but I've not noticed any control changes you have to change really. it in the menu i don't know if you've got a menu you can oh. uh maybe you should do. i noticed the, inv the inventory stuff is quite handy like the whole pinning items in the shop i found that quite useful straight away because there was a couple of um i got a couple of new uh you know manuscripts for oils and stuff and I, when i got to skelliger because what obviously what was quite good is that i played up to the not i got to skelliger and then i kind of stopped playing it did arkham knight and came back so it was quite cool to come back to the witcher 3 and have a whole new play area to start off and it felt like I wasn't just coming back to bloody villain again I was like I'm going back to the Witcher 3 but in a new area so I got yeah. there started getting new stuff obviously you're in a new area you're going to find new things so I found the pinning, pinning in, um, ingredients thing was great I managed to get myself some pretty cool oils from one shop without having to go uh, right so I've got to look at this he just got 500 different herbs and I want that one and that one I, I haven't just, noticed like, that pinned. yet but I haven't been because I've got so many things and I've got nearly every single oil I haven't really needed to buy anything yet but I'm sure I'll notice that at some point. Um, that having the books in a different tab is quite cool. I've actually unlocked a few yeah. quests just by reading some of the books that were in my inventory that I thought I'd already read. Um, so that's really cool. I've, I've now got a, another wolf armor quest. Uh, I think it's tier four wolf armor that I'm going to get. But I still haven't got the, f the first tier of wolf armor because I'm not a care on yet. So um, one of my favorite one of my favorite changes I've noticed is fixes an issue where in certain circumstances gravity ceased to apply to the player's horse. Nice. Yes, <laughs> that happened does, to my horse. It has fixed that because I've been down a sheer cliff like that, and he's actually been touching the ground instead of floating like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else in that list that you? Um, this this, this improves overall game performance and other optimizations, but apparently this patch actually slows the frame rate on or lowers the frame rate on console. But I noticed when I was in the game just now 
Did it seem smoother? It, it feels smoother to me, and also they've, they've included a lot more options, especially around the hair work stuff. So you can optimize the hair work. So I can have it on now. I can actually turn hair works on for Geralt, but I can just lower the quality of hair works. It's still better than the mm. default um, plain based hair. Uh, but yeah, it's. There, there is one huge rant that I want to have about this new patch, and this has been a bugbear for other games as well that seem to do this, but it's reset all the controls to default. Oh. Now, for most people, that's not much of a problem because you redefine a few controls, or maybe don't even redefine any in a lot of cases, but I changed virtually every control to move it over to the side of the keyboard, and I had to install fixes to allow me to bind keys like Enter, which you can't boot do by default. The locked, but you can do that now. You can't. They have unlocked all of the. Oh, oh, oh no, they've got sure locked. They've got lock icons at the bottom. No, no, you can unlock them as an option to unlock them. All right, well, okay. In fact, there was an unlock. There was an option to unlock them before because I unlocked uh, my horse I, key and I rebound that somewhere. My call horse I key. I install some some kind of a patch to fix that. Yeah, uh, maybe maybe they introduced it in a previous patch then. But either way, you can now definitely unlock all. There's an actual there's a, a button or there's a bit of text that says unlock controls. Mm. Uh, so but I really I really wish they wouldn't reset controls. They do it in a lot of Unreal Engine games as well. When Unreal, Unreal Engine games get updated, they seem to reset your controls. Now I and get you, but it still doesn't stop <sighs> me from playing a game if that happens because I, I rebound a few controls as well, and it resets for me too. But you didn't rebind every control and spend a while trying to work out which is the best. Like I, I've done, got fewer options, and I've got to try and come up with compromises for buttons and put oh. things on the mouse buttons and put things. I've got to do a lot of trial and error, and it's just. Like thirty or forty binds that I've got to try and sort out. You, the you're is it because you're left-handed? Is that the reason? It's a play games left-handed, yeah. Yeah. And there seems to be less and less support for left-handed <laughs> gamers. There's less and less support for console to PC bindings in general. But I mean, as I said, if I want to play a game, I don't mind so much rebinding. I could. It's as as being a PC gamer. I have to be honest, I'm used to it and I prefer having that control. Yeah. What I don't like are games like Skyrim, for example, even though I played nearly 200 hours of it, um, that that don't let you bind like things like the mouse buttons. I couldn't bind the mouse buttons to strafe in Skyrim, which... Yeah, Skyrim, Skyrim started... Well, it was one of the first games horrific. to start having these problems where there were certain, certain buttons and, and keys that were just off limits to you. Hmm. And there's no reason for there's absolutely no reason to not allow someone to rebind certain keys. Escape enter, is the only key that you shouldn't be able to rebind unless. Well, yeah, escape. But enter is quickly becoming one of those keys that is forcibly bound. Um, it's just it's annoying. It's, it's very because annoying. there's so many things. I, well, I'm not saying actually. There's no excuse. You're right. There is no excuse. Now resetting binds. I can understand that to an extent as a developer. I can understand that it's. It's sometimes when you, especially if you change a control system for any reason, that will make it'll make it difficult for you. If you need, if you change the underlying object structure or something like that, when it comes to creating a controller system, I imagine that would be quite difficult to map that into whatever context. I don't think it would. I, th I think it's laziness. D th there's probably an element of that as well, but I know there's been a few times when I've been trying to rebind uh, controls on my side, and it's been like. Oh my god, this is just going to be easier if I just reset it. But I haven't had exactly. Major, I haven't had major games that have been out there that have been. Uh... There's also I been new keys a... as well, though. There's new keys that you can bind in this patch too. So... Which is probably one of the reasons why they've done it. But I just don't know why they couldn't have written a quick script to just go through all of your current binds and map them to binds that are, that exist in a new one. I'm pretty and sure. Just that... point out new ones that are there. I'm pretty sure if you send CD Projekt Red a question and ask them why, they'll come up with a valid reason for it. I might do that and see do what it. I get response see, I get for next week. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Um, get on the get on the forums. Good old forums, 1998. Okay, so um, I've played quite a few games this week. I've obviously played a bit of Witcher. I haven't played too much because I've been absolutely addicted to Terraria with Lou and Stee. Um, we've, I've now, I have now exceeded the amount of hours that I have played to um, Skyrim with Terraria hours. 187 hours I played Skyrim. 207 hours I think I'm on with Terraria now, <laughs> and I'm still not bored. I'm still, and it's 2D. It's a 2D procedurally generated game that has infuriating bosses in this bloody new expert mode as well. 
we've we've tried to me, Lou, and Steve for the last couple. Of, we've been struggling to all get on at once, and we kind of made a pact that we wouldn't do too much advancement without each other altogether. Um, even though we have played separately occasionally, we, we've tried not to do bosses and things like that without each other. So me and me, Lou, and Steve last night we tried to kill Skeletron for the second time. Skeletron's the third boss um, in the uh, pre-hard mode game. And he's fucking nails in in. Mm. We've got it on expert mode as well, so that probably that's why because in expert mode he has more defense. And when you get rid of his, you have to kill his hands first because Skeletron is like a skull that flies around, and he's got hands that kind of come out and hit you. Jazz hands, of jazz doom. hands, yeah. And you have to basically previously you could kill his skull without killing his hands. You could kill his hands and take a bit of defense off him, but it wouldn't make that much difference. But now when you kill his hands as well, he starts firing other skulls out at you, which didn't and and they just kind of curve round and and uh, basically follow you. And if all three of you die or dawn hits uh, in the game because you fight him at night, uh, you bas basically he just he just goes crazy and just splats all of you. He just kills you all. Um, so we've we've tried to kill him three times now, I think, and we've failed every time. And we're getting there. We were so close last time, weren't we? We were only he had about twenty percent health third, left. Yeah, about about third of his health left. Um, but once we've done him, then we can then go and kill the wall of flesh, which I think we can do anyway because I spawned him by accident, didn't it? Yeah, we we got loads of guide dolls. We might be worth just going for him first, maybe, and getting uh, getting better weapons. I've been keeping an eye on um, on Moon Man, which I mentioned a few episodes back, and that's looking fantastic now. The biomes in that are really beautiful. Um, Is it multiplayer? It's not going to be multiplayer. Uh, it's also going to be having an objective. It's not going to be just play it forever. It's actually got very specific biomes with a, a goal in them, but it just... It just looks beautiful. It looks so nice now. Um, I'm trying to find some screenshots of it. I, what, uh, what is this game? I don't even know what it is. It's Moon like Man's a Terraria-style another... game. Yeah. It's kind of cross between Terraria and... Um, what's that? What's that other one I've been playing? Um, space? No. Oh, uh, God damn it. Anyway, list. another it's... one. Uh, there's, it's not. I haven't been playing it this week, unfortunately, but... Um, Starbound, that's it. Starbound, so it's kind yeah. of a cross between that, but it's big. I think it looks like it's bigger pixel art than Terraria. Terraria, you're quite small characters, but in this one, you're quite quite large. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I like again. I like the look of it, but um, I said I'll I'll give it a go. But I, th I think I'd, those kind of games, I think I'd rather play. I'd rather play some multiplayer with mates. I would like to play a multiplayer on that, but it didn't actually reach the multiplayer um, stretch goal in Kickstarter. But it's still, I think. Even though I played the alpha and the gameplay is so and so, it just looks so nice. It's such a beautiful looking game, hmm. and such a beautiful example of what you can do with procedural generation. If this guy got on with the Terraria guys, oh my god, it would be Take amazing. Take over the world. Yeah, but it could be the easy. worst amalgamation ever. He's clearly being influenced by Terraria because the game yeah, is yeah. very similar. But yeah, anyway. Um, other games I've been playing this week, I decided, I keep seeing uh, Payday 2 pop up in my Steam recommendations and lots of my friends on Steam play it and I saw it was in a sale this week and I thought, oh, should <laughs> I get it? Um, and I, had a, I think it was on Humble, but her Humble store actually, and it was like 50% off or 80% or something ridiculous. Anyway, looked on another website and it was £5 for that plus all the DLC and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll see what that is. Anyway, there's a demo, downloaded a demo from Steam, played it for about must be about 20 30 minutes and it's not as good as i thought it was going to be i i was expecting it to be a proper awesome heist em up but it just feels like cs it just feels like counter strike really uh, yeah i mean really? it, it feels a bit flimsy as well i mean the animations feel dated now and they, they keep adding new content to it um actually no the actual reason that i went for it is because i've just read a review um it's getting released on playstation 4 i believe it's getting a re-release from playstation 3 onto playstation 4 and uh, the the dev was saying that they've got like a five-year plan or something for releasing all this new content in it and i thought well maybe it's worth a go maybe it's you know if it's still got a big community and stuff I just didn't feel it. I, again, I was one of the only people trying to speak to everybody on mics as well on online. I know that's a bad idea, but mm. these days, you know, especially when it comes to those kind of games, you want to be you want to be talking to people. So, but I don't know. Maybe maybe it's worth us all downloading the demo together and having a go off if you if you if you fancy that kind of thing. Maybe. I always thought that was the kind of game that I 
would have thought would be more fun playing it co-op with other people rather than playing with strangers or AIs. Yes. Because you, you, I, would, I would imagine if you play the heist, you kind of want to plan it. Yeah, exactly, and the problem is with that, and the same applies to GTA Online when you do the heists there, people just literally run towards the goal or blast a door off and you're like, no, we wanted to stealth in, the fucking police are coming now, shit. You've got two minutes to drill through the... Drill through the bloody vault when the vault does finally get dri and then another thing is i swear to god everybody was fucking awful as well they were the worst players i've ever played with in my life police <laughs> the, the ai is terrible it's shocking right the police run through the door start spraying bullets everywhere they don't hit you or anything i i headshot a few of them right just a few uh, th these guys are playing on pc right they should be better than they are you know they should have more accuracy and more control and this they come in shoot everybody else and I, I just headshot about six guard, six uh, SWAT team, and then that's it. There's no more SWAT team for a little bit. I revive a few people, and then someone else dies and gets arrested or whatever. And then I just stand dies near the... And gets arrested. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think when you die, you automatically get arrested or put in jail or something. I, can't, I, did, <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't quite follow some of it, I'll be honest, because there was a few different game modes and stuff. And, it, and I just stood near the safe and just kept picking picking SWAT team members off. And I think I died once in the whole thing, and that was only because I was the only person left and everyone else had got arrested and I just got swarmed by police and they happened to accidentally shoot me, I think. I, is it, um, I hope it's is better it, than I'm giving it credit for because it's got great reviews. Well, I was, what I went to ask was I've, I've heard about the game and heard that it was quite a well-reviewed... It's an indie title as well, right? So it hasn't got the huge like budget of... like a. I, or whatever, um, they they right? call themselves indie, but I think it's got a fairly big budget now. I don't think it's a full-on indie title. Well, I think maybe the first published. one was indie, possibly. Maybe. Anyway, uh, but is it a, is it strictly a multiplayer game, or can you play it one player with AI? There's, um, an, there's an offline mode. Effects. I didn't get a chance to play it because it's a demo, so you, you can either log in and be online uh, on the crime net, but the offline mode I think is just the same. You just you, you basically choose. You, you look at a map. You choose. Um, you choose your heist based on skull levels, you know, how hard they are. And apparently you shouldn't do a level, a level four until you're at least level 30 or something like that. Um, but I don't know how accurate that is. I said I, I played maybe three or four games of it. It's, it's one of those that I think I want to play with friends, you know. I don't think I, could, I, don't think I can handle another second with a lot of plebs online. I, I, it's, it's not even... I wasn't even getting angry with people. I was just like, oh, really? Really, guys? <laughs> you weren't angry, you were just disappointed. Yeah, disappointed with gamer races. The gamer race. It's like, <laughs> why are you all such painfully noob Some of idiots? them were like level 20 odd as well, and it was like, come on, I'm fucking level 1. I'm not, I haven't even got any good gear. I've not even got a silencer. You know. One thing I've noticed, though, is that I think in a lot of games these days, it you can get to be a higher level if you just put the time in. You don't yeah. have to get better at the game. Like, I'm sure I encountered a few, when I was playing GTA online, a few guys who were like level 70, yeah. and were crap. It's just like, you can't drive, you can't shoot, you just literally spent a million hours on this game, but somehow not gotten any better at it in you that know, time. You know what I equate that to, when you meet someone who's a high level and, and is, is terrible, I equate it to, and I know we're living in 2015, but I equate it to lag. This is my 1990 self coming back out and thinking, this guy can't see me. He, he can't aim because I, there's too much latency between him shooting and me. But the, everything's got auto aim anyway these days, you know, GTA, for example. So you could just, I'm just like, just, I don't want, I don't want perfection, but I want at least a modicum of competency. Just. Is this, a, is this a trend in the, um, in the whole kind of game and community then that, that gamers are just on average getting worse? I think there's just more of them because it's becoming more yeah. and more popular, more accepted to be a gamer, isn't it? It's becoming a, it's becoming the norm. And there are more filthy casuals right now. Yeah, yeah. And then there's there's more people who play a single game forever and ever and ever because remember as well. I know there's a lot of people who are our age and they've got jobs and they can afford to buy a constant stream of games like we tend to do. But there's also still a lot of kids that can only afford one game every few months as well, and they'll be playing GTA Online forever because they've saved up for ever or the moment the mum said yes to it or whatever, you know. Yeah. I have a recollection of when I was a kid, if I played a game a lot, I generally got better at it though, yeah. over time. <laughs> That's the thing. Well, maybe now it just doesn't matter. Maybe they'd just ra rather go on and scream at someone and go, you're fucking racist, or whatever, <laughs> whatever they do. 
some of the language I think, I think I hear coming is, out of people's mouths as well. I was going to say, calling someone a racist is a really mild thing yeah, to say well, compared no, to what people actually I was, say. I was trying not to be one of them. I was trying to keep this as PC as we can keep it. Anybody who's watching this has got access to the internet, so they know what we're talking about it, it, anyway. I don't, I don't need to qualify it with the actual words that people use, yeah. Yeah, we all know. Oh, so yes, um, Terraria, Payday, Witcher Three. Um, I played a bit of. It's been it's been in my BDI for a while. I played a, a bit of a game called Teleglitch, um, and it's a top down, procedurally generated um, roguelike game. And you, you're this you're this little pixel man, and you're basically you're in a um, you're in a research facility that, that, as far as I can tell so far, I've only played maybe thirty minutes to an hour of it, but you you. Whenever you die, you're dead. But you have to basically collect a load of items around this research facility and kill zombies and robots and things that... But you're the only only human. You're the only living person on there. But it's really quite tense. So you, you've got... You know, you start off with a, a knife and you pick, you quickly pick up a pistol. And you're running... The, the, the demo... The, re, the reason I bought the game is because the... Not the demo, the... Um, the trailer for it on Steam is re looks really cool, and one of our mutual friends, Lou uh, Mars, actually recommended it to me a while back. Nice. And uh, so I, yeah, I've been I've been playing it, and you, you can upgrade your weapons. It's got a really cool like combination system. It's dead quick and easy to do it, but it's kind of like a twitch game. So you have to. It depend. The further you get into the game, the further you you get into the levels. Obviously, the more difficult it gets, but the more you get swarmed by enemies. So you might want to combine a couple of bombs together, make a massive explosion, or you might want to combine a nails with with a bomb to make a nail bomb. Or you it's can like get... Smash Smash TV, isn't it? Sort yeah, but it's it's a horror kind of thriller. There's no music in it either, and it's um, it's got this really eerie feel because as you're walking around, you come up with computer, you go up to computer terminals, and it kind of tells you what's going on in the facility, explains what all of the monsters are and why they exist, and you know what the process was to get through to creating these monsters. So obviously, the first enemies that you encounter, they just can just stab you a bit or punch you a bit, and the next ones, uh, the next level anyway, you get like heavily armored ones that can stab you and punch you harder, things like that, and then you start getting ones with with weapons and that's basically where I've got up to is like I've got someone who's got a, a pistol so far I think I'm like level three or four in or even um just starve uh, just starve don't starve don't starve just starve just, just, starve. just, starve. just eat just, sorry, I got it you, just, you just sit there and <laughs> don't starve is the easiest game ever you just turn the game on and just leave it and the guy starves to death in a corner just over the course starve. of like a week <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, it's like um, it's like that. Anyway, don't starve. Sorry. So you've got um, once you get to certain levels, I think it's like levels three, six, nine, twelve, etc. It saves, so you you can go back to level three. You can go back to level six, which I like because there's nothing worse than getting to level twelve, being really, really, really careful, and then the procedurally generated world throws something ridiculously hard at you. And you can't proceed because you know you get you get knacked over by accident. So I'm I'm glad that they put that in. I think I'll go back to it. It's uh, it's one I'm quite enjoying, and it's got a certain uh, certain feeling to it that I enjoy. It's that thriller kind of. It's a bit horror, but obviously it's not full on horror because you can't really see much that's going on because it's pixel art. Uh, so I've actually played quite a few games this week, as you can you can probably tell. Another one I played is Mirror Moon EP, which is one that you might like, Lou. It's a very pretty looking game. It's it's the way I would describe it is it's a cross between Antichamber and Portal and kind of other puzzle games. Um lots of other puzzle three D puzzle games. You can't you can't move your mouse up and down, so you can't look up and down. The control system's a bit weird in that you strafe you you can strafe and turn so you turn with your either it's really quite hard to explain because it's a very different way of doing an F, a first person game you you basically you start on a moon and you walk around this moon and you have to find you, when you get to a certain point on the on the moon you st you see the moon that you're on above you and that moon as you progress on the first moon, on the first level, you can basically start controlling that moon. So you can start, when you get pick certain things up within the level, you can start firing things onto the moon so you can see where you are, so you can plan paths to other places on the moon. And when you finally get to these other places, you just need, need to, so far, just like need to interact with them, like walk towards them, and you pick up a new part for your gun, or you, you pick up a, 
uh, or, you, or you activate some platforms or something and, it, and it'll do certain things but it's really confusing it seems very arty if you know what I mean it seems like a lot of effort's gone into uh, the art side of things um, in terms of like abstract art I'm not talking about like pr particularly the look of it it just feels a little bit like it's the design is art you know like like antechamber felt and antechamber feels confusing at times but mm. still very rewarding when you do figure something out i don't feel as rewarded with this i completed the first two moons but there's literally i think there's an infinite galaxy of moons and i don't understand how the i don't know if it's procedural or not i don't know if they're all planned or, or is infinite in fact but when you, you you have a spaceship platform and you're kind of standing in space with this mm -hmm. um console in front of you this is like the how you get to do the different moons and then you have to enable all the controls on the the space and have to figure on, on the control panel and you have to figure out which ones do which and to in order to move in the z plane you have to use a certain control and in order to move back and forth and rotate around the 2d plane in 3d space you have to rotate it's really weird to put it as you've explained that i've been watching a video of it and i'm still confused yeah yeah it's, it's totally crazy. confusing you're making me confused that what you're saying doesn't make sense to but that's the thing. it's another one of those like anti-chamber was it's one of those that tries to play with the concept of first person and it tries to play with the concept of puzzle game and i think if i played it a bit more i might get more rewarded but i'm not sure if i will have the patience to go back to it because it's so strange um and it's so abstract that's i think that's probably the best way to describe it it's very abstract I like the website for it yes the website again that's one of the things that made me actually get the game um it was in a humble bundle a few weeks ago i believe quite a few weeks ago i got it with a few other puzzle puzzleish games uh, including another copy of Antichamber, so <laughs> I think I've got like three copies of Antichamber now. Um, so I also went back to Prison Architect this week. Oh my god, are they still working on that? Oh my god. I just wanted is to it, have is a it play out yet? Is it out yet? It's not, it's on beat of 507 or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so introversion, sort your shit out, do a release for god's sake. Um, I haven't played through the single player stuff because at the beginning of the game you get a. Um, you get a little intro and it tells you basically about how prisons work or how the prison system works um, in the game obviously not in real life and um they've, they've added quite a few new things to it they've also i just enabled sandbox mode this time because if, instead of having to hack the config file and give yourself infinite money they just put in a button that says enable sandbox mode which is brilliant so you can now go in and build a prison as much as you want so that's all i did i played that for a few hours um, there's a few extra new things in to do with like the bureaucracy chain. Uh, bureaucracy is where you can train each of your uh, admin staff to do certain things. So you can train your security guard, for, your security officer, for example, to to have CCTV cameras and have guard dogs and have armored guards and things like that. There's a few extra bits on that. Um, I still like it. I still think it's great and it's very addictive. I think hours went by while I was playing it again, and I just got I just was like that by the end of it as a little bit. Uh, a bit much, but um, yeah, they need to release it. They need to actually do a release. Yeah, they need to, yeah, they need to stop stop adding things to it. How long ago and was it when you first started talking about this game? Because it feels I've like about, I've known about it for about five years now. It must, it, be. It must have been before five we years? started Resonance wow. Arcade. It must be before. We, it must be because we've. I mean, that's another thing as well, guys. Uh, for those who are watching, we're, it's our one year anniversary next week, and we will be having a very special party for it. Uh, I bet Steve doesn't turn up. <laughs> or wear stupid hats or something. Yes. Um, I don't know. We'd, we probably won't do anything special, but we, I might try and get a guest on for next week just to mix it up a bit, possibly. Um, I'll see. I've got someone in mind. Cool. Um, Prison Architect was uh, made available as a crowdfunded paid alpha in 2012. Three Come years. On, that's like three years ago. Mm. No, why isn't it just... Is there not enough content that they could have gone, here it is? Yes, there is. Released. They could, what they could do is they could stop adding new features to it, fix all of the bugs, focus on that, and then release it as it is. Yeah. This They've is typical creature version, though. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe the length of this game's development isn't typical introversion, but introversion are very, very independent. Like, the more independent than a lot of indies are, and they just do whatever the hell they want, and they don't care. Yeah. But, I mean, they must be making money off it, so... 
and they can pay the three or four developers they've got. I don't think they're a huge team. No, it's three guys. Yeah, so I, I, to be fair, they've got a decent community around Prison Architect. They've hit the nail on the head with it as well. They're actually getting feedback from the fans quite a lot, quite often. But yeah, I, I still enjoy it. I just, I just would rather have a finished game that had a single player campaign that I could just go into and, you know, bang out, you know. Um, that's it. That's all my games. It's more than normal, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I decided this weekend. I thought, right, I've got a little bit of spare time. Let's let's try and get through some of my Steam games and at least give them a go. Um, oh, one other thing, I've, because of this new 4K monitor that I've got, it's an absolute nightmare to get a load of games working. And a lot of the games I have to run in windowed mode, like Terraria, for example. And when I'm in a frantic boss battle, the amount of times I've minimised my window or have accidentally double clicked the title bar <laughs> and it's ended up that big on my screen, and I'm like that. Ah. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous and it's and it, uh, games that uh, introversion um prison architect that is another one that has a problem with 4k it just kept crashing on me whenever i tried to put it in 4k apparently games that have been written in xna which is like stuff like terraria and i think um prison architect they have a hard limit of t uh, 1080p really yeah there's a there's actually a hard limit with the uh the sdk well you can actually put it in 4k um prison architect in the full cinematic 4k but it, it just it does work but it's a bit, it's very flimsy i get a lot right. of freezes and crashes but when i run it in 1080 and just stretch the screen it's okay the problem is is if i stretch the screen because of the way the display port works if i change it to 1080 and make it full screen i lose basically everything on my other monitors so i couldn't have a wiki up for example for terraria because of the resolution because it changes the resolution of everything all right, not okay. just not just the centre monitor. Um, it's really really quite dodgy. So should we move on? Unless you guys have got any other games that you want to mention or talk about? Nope, don't think so. Okie dokie. So um, let's work, move on to the way of the exploring list. Oh yeah! <laughs> hey, at least we get we're all getting into it now. That's that was brilliant. That's the style. That's the style. Has anyone got an idea? Has anyone in chat got an idea for a list? Um, so what this section is, is we talk about, uh, uh, w when we first started the show, we basically, it was a list show, we'd have a list about, we'd, we'd talk about favourite weapons, we'd talk about favourite cinematic moments in games, favourite landscapes, that kind of thing. So now what we've done is we've, we've put it down into a 5, 10, 15 minute section of us waffling about some games and it's kind of a, we throw it, we throw stuff out. I've actually got something this week which... Uh, Unless you guys have any ideas, because no, Sam, you don't come up with ideas very often. I feel like I have done the past few episodes, though, that I have been chucking out ideas. But I've okay. got, I've got one, I've got one cooking, but I don't know if it's. Uh... Well, mine's not great, so again, I'm, I'm happy for. <laughs> um. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, best antiheroes in games, because we've had like best characters, but someone who's possibly an antagonist who you might sort of like. In an anti-hero, not not entirely a villain, but like an anti-hero, like a Sephiroth. He's a villain. No, I suppose he's not an anti-hero, is he at all? In fact, Cloud's a bit of an anti-hero when you think about the story arc. A lot of a lot of protagonists are anti-heroes. Like John Marston is completely an anti-hero. Yeah. yeah. Duke Nukem is as well, really. <laughs> you mean Duke Nukem's not a paragon of, of manhood? <laughs> uh, he just. He thinks he is. Yeah. I just every time it's I don't even mind the old Duke Nukem, but the Duke Nukem Forever Duke Nukem is just the biggest dickhead on the planet. Just want him to die. <laughs> anti heroes. <clears throat> so we're we doing anti heroes then, yeah? Yeah, unless you want to throw you lot, up because... I think a lot of them are. It, it kind of it's how you play them, I guess. I mean Gordon Freeman isn't an anti hero because he's uh He's, he's an not everyman. Even a hero, really. Yeah, he's an everyman, whereas I guess um JC Denton is a bit more anti-hero-ish. Why? But isn't that... No, isn't but it, again, it, it, again it comes down to how you play him. Well, yeah, it does. Yes and no. I mean, it, that could apply to a lot of games. You could apply that to Dishonored. You could apply that to... Uh, even things like, to an extent, you could Corvo apply it to... Uh, you, I wouldn't say Corvo's an anti-hero. You could, you could apply it to someone like Shepard, though. Um, yeah. Fem Shep or whatever you, you could call apply it to... You could apply it to Dowd from the DLC if you, anyone's played that. Still haven't played he's, it. He's completely an anti-hero. Obviously, you, yeah. you, you'd come up against him in a one-player game, but you see his story. And again, that DLC, if you like Dishonored, mate... I know, I know, I know. Go. It's yeah. really good. Um, 
He got Michael Madsen doing the voice, man. It's awesome. Oh, uh, brilliant. Yeah, he does the voice of Dowd. That's what's really stuck well. in the middle with you to come on and for him to start <laughs> dancing around with someone's ear. He's good at voice of Michael Madsen. He's got that kind of really gritty fucking boozed up and worn out voice. Just sounds but not really all done. boozed up and worn out. That's yeah, right. That's the best, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you can't cheat that kind of voice. You've got to earn it. Yeah, yeah. Through years of neglect of yourself. <laughs> He's sneaking on a hero. I would say that I would say that Big Boss is more of an anti-hero, as in like in Metal Gear Solid Three and things, because we know what he becomes. Snake is more like a, just a hero, hero. Yeah, he's, I mean, a, he's, he's, he's a full he's American gruff. hero type guy, isn't he? He's... Yeah, he's gr- he's gruff and surly, but he's totally the hero. He does the right thing. He makes the moral choices. He saves the day, even if he might be a bit of a grumpy twat whilst he's doing it. He's still totally a hero. <laughs> What about Razael? Someone like um, what about Razael from? Um... I was going to say Razael is is an anti-hero. He does. He works a lot for the greater good, but he still goes round and kills a fucking <laughs> lot of people. Souls. <laughs> he kills a lot of people. He kills a lot of vampires and demons and other creatures. And oh, but he does it. But he does it all. and gets upset about it. Yeah, as he does <laughs> that it. makes it bad. He's always on, he's always on about the torment. The torment. Yeah, yeah. Well, a, a, a great anti-hero. Um, uh, God of War, dude. Kratos. Kratos. Yeah, Kratos. He's, he's the epitome of the anti-hero. Yeah, he's just a bellend. He is like, a bellend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was going to say another good anti-hero who, who some people, depending on what you think of him, uh, is might actually be straight up like villain is Joel from The Last of Us as well. Very much. Well, don't, a, don't spoil anything because I still haven't completed it. I still haven't completed it. I did not know that. Thank you. You fucked that for me. <laughs> You've had enough time now. I, I'm, 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 we, we haven't played it for months now, but I do need also, to finish off. He feels okay to me at the moment in the story. He feels like he's still. Kind of a good guy, so... You must have killed quite a few people, though, by now, eh? Well, I've killed... I don't, a... I, I don't think killing people counts as an anti-hero. I think most, most games allow you to That's kill people. That's a trope people. in a game, isn't it? But there's, also, there's, just... I think, I think there's something coming, though. I can feel that in the in the air. I think there's something nasty to do with that guy. I don't know what, though. Yeah. Uh, Lou, if you can't get away with the third-person like thing, you're never going to play the game anyway. You know, you know what you're better off doing? You're better off watching... Um, a cinematic playthrough of it where someone plays through the game, does the important gameplay bit, shows you all the cutscenes and just experience the story that way. Because if you don't like third person shooter games, that's you're not probably a good idea. I might, I might watch I can, a long play of it. I can tell you one thing as well, Lou do not play it on hard because I don't mind my third person games. I'm hating it on hard. I should have put it on bumps. easier. Because it's just, it's there's a lot of sections that are just laborious and it's like I'm dying 500 times trying to get past them. It's like, it's not fun. I should have played it on an easier setting. It's my fault. All right, I might just do a, the, do the long play route then. Anyways, uh, yeah, so I don't have to think of other anti heroes now that I started it. Yeah, Kratos is just. But I was going to say about Joel's Kratos again, he's kind of. By the time you get to God of War 3, Kratos just feels like the bad guy. Mario. Now, like. <laughs> Mario, all these innocent little goombas just going along. Dun, 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 Squash to death! <laughs> Crush me. He's a doggy, isn't he? That's, that's why I say he's an anti hero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's not. Have you seen those um those like realistic badass Mario pictures that, are, that you can find? Some of them are mint. They're so funny. There's like him like tr- like crushing goombas and all guts coming out. Of him oh, oh yeah yeah yeah. Sorry, that's what you mean. Yeah. All dystopian like horrible Mario. There was something to do with a Mario Kart bedroom going around this week that I haven't looked at, but some everyone was going about. I want that as my bedroom and some bollocks. I don't know if you saw it. Some I'm sure that yeah. anyone over the age yeah. of seven doesn't want that as their bedroom. Apparently, not in real life. I haven't, I haven't seen it. Right. Uh, so, what about someone like Geralt? Because I mean, he's... again, some of them come down to choice, don't they? You can play Geralt no. as an anti hero. No, you can't. No, you, you can't because you can. No, you can. You can. There's certain choices you can make. Where like someone will be like, "Hey, Geralt, help me out," and they'll be like, "Not my business." Or you can be like, "Step yeah, back." Yeah, but that's the Witcher code, though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if you're I, not going to get paid him. for it. Yeah, I normally play him quite altruistically, and I normally help people out and don't yeah, but, take to, don't yeah, take money you, for it. I have but played. There's the option there to not do that. There's the option there to be. Go, the, I don't care. I'm not going to help but, you. But the option to be the shrewd businessman and say, "Nope, you're going to have to pay for it," isn't an anti hero thing. It's just I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying about the businessman. There is lots of options where you can literally just say, "I'm not going to help you." You can. You're there right. You're right. Where okay. will say. Geralt, what do you think about this? And you can say, not my business, don't care. But, or you can side with them and go, leave the lady alone or leave this guy alone and then look, but, look after them. There will be a hanging question mark laying on your map if you do that. So that is not possible to do that. It is not possible. I don't care who you are. 
You cannot do that. Um, no, but I, I, I mean, you can't play Geralt in, in a way that's other than a Witcher. You can say no to something. You can be professional, and being professional, as you said, doesn't have a, a negative connotation. But you, you say that you play, play him altruistically. It's interesting yeah. because I play every single RPG that I can think of altruistically, but I'm not an altruistic person in general. I, I want reward for something that I do in life. That is the way that my brain works. When I play game, when I play RPGs, I play them altruistically. But I don't play Geralt altruistically because I've got the option to be. Uh, it's it's clearly defined that I will be either professional and not a bad guy, or it, I will be. I'll, I'll I'll be altruistic, and I don't want to be altruistic it, if I've got the option to be good but still have money for it's, it. It's <laughs> interesting. You play Geralt like like a contractor, which is yeah. what you are. Yeah. Well, he is. He is a contractor. He's a mercenary, isn't he? Yeah, he's a contractor, and he, he needs money for what he does. Maybe that's why you I got, like the game. You got so a much. problem? Like, who are you going to call? It's Geralt. Who's he's going to charge you for it? Yeah. <laughs> charge you a decent bit of gold. Sorry, but I'm play I'm RPGing as a Witcher. I am going to be ruthless when it comes to money and, and in fact every single time I have the option I will try and squeeze more money out of people as well there's that, there's that whole bartering thing as well oh it's not quite enough I know I've we put to... it up by five gold and that's it and I don't want to push it too oh, far no 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 <laughs> I push it up at least like two thirds of the way and then oh I do they, as well if they accept it I'm like oh shit I should have went further than that and if they don't <laughs> accept it I'm like oh well uh, I'll have to drop it down quite a bit now because I've already said no to it and it's like shit could have lost out there I've had a couple of times where I've gone like, you know, because it you, was your bonus gold, but it, when it comes to the point where you're getting five, you're like, fuck you, I'm going to keep arguing. And I've got to the point where their annoyance has gone so far, they're like, nope, the price yeah. is set. And you're like, oh, fuck off, man. <laughs> like, for the sake of ten gold extra, like, I'm killing a fucking Cyclops for you. At least you can yeah. do is you, give us two hundred kill Here you go. I'll yeah. give one of our spare swords. How much, how much is the, how much your village worth, mate? What, 200 gold? Give me a fucking break here. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just, yeah. So, yeah, He's, okay. Geralt isn't an anti-hero. I think he that's can. what we established there. John, John Marsden is, because even if you play him as a good guy, he still has that part of his character. He still like it, the way he treats people in general. Even if he is saving them, he's still a dick. Especially Cole, to his uncle. Cole the McGrath old... from, um, from Infamous. Is it McGrath? Is that his second yeah, name? Yeah, McGrath, yeah. Because you can play him either way. You can play him as an anti-hero. Well, you can play him as a bad guy or as a good yeah. guy. So I suppose that's not an anti-hero, is it? Yeah, you can play him as, I guess, the bad guy who happens to beat up the other bad guys, I think is the way you look at it, because you still complete the story mode and kill the bad guys, but you just kill all of innocent people too, uh, yeah, and yeah. don't give a shit about them as you do it. That's kind of anti-hero, I suppose. I mean, John Marston, again, uh, one of my, my favourite anti-heroes. Okay, so... You can play Culver as an anti-hero, but he's not really got much of a character, though. He's he, well. You don't know, do you? You don't really play him as an anti-hero. You play him as a, it's chaos or non-chaos. So when well, you kill guards, you can kill uh, innocents as well. I suppose if you want to. Is there innocence in that game? Yeah, there yeah, are. There's like maids and stuff that you can kill. You can if you want, I suppose, but it doesn't. I mean, it affects the world in, world in chaos, but it doesn't make. I suppose that's yeah, because he's quiet. It does make him an anti-hero, doesn't it? Yeah. No, I don't think it does. I don't think Cobo's an anti-hero. I think I think he's too much of a blank slate, really. Yeah. yeah, he's very blank. But I think obviously that was intentional, wasn't it? You can kind of you can make that it. argument about a lot of RPG. You can sort of say uh, the Dragonborn hero is an anti-hero if you want him to be, or her. But he's you though. That's the thing with the way that they've done that. He is you. That's, I think one yeah. of the prerequisites of an anti-hero is that the story has to suggest reasons for why he's being bad. Yes. Rather yeah. than just let you play them badly. Because any game you can be an anti-hero, really. You can just be a dick to everyone. Yeah, Shadow the Hedgehog is an anti-hero. Just... Shadow of the Hedgehog. Shadow, no, the, Shadow Hedgehog. the Hedgehog. I Shadow of the Hedgehog. Shadow... <laughs> it's like the really crap sequel to Shadow of the Colossus. <laughs> <laughs> you know? A really just difficult like, climb. You turn, you go on this huge valley and it's like epic music. It's da, 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 just a, head, a little hedgehog running along a little ledge. <laughs> Collecting coins. Ding, ding, ding. Right, so should we move on or should we uh, should we try and find any more protagonists? Anyone in chat have any ideas for, not protagonists, for, I can, I fucking love protagonists. Don't I? A lot of yeah. protagonists are anti-heroes. <sighs> yes. Well, what about Batman? Because he's, he's, he can, he, he's, he's, he's got a moral, he's got a bent moral compass, let's say. Yeah. He's, he's you know, a bit of an anti-hero. Because uh, he, he does, he does things for the greater good that he thinks of the greater good, but he's actually, it's a lot of um, vigilanteism, isn't it, really? Yeah, a lot of a lot of anger and, and like vengeance in there as well. A lot of uh, like he, he, you get the feeling that like it is a way to explore his psychology in the comics as well. Hmm. 
that they do it quite a lot in the games that he he, he kind of like he, he's unnecessarily brutal in the way that he beats people up. <laughs> like a lot of the takedowns in Batman, like you do that uh, that uh, triangle square takedown thing, and you'll grab a guy, flip him over, and just go crack, and pull his shoulder out, and you're like. You didn't really need to do that to that guy. Yeah. It looks awesome and it's badass, but it's a little bit unnecessary. <laughs> what, he didn't have a gun and he wasn't just about to shoot you, though. Come on. Give him a yeah, break. Yeah, I know. There's some, there's some of those moves that he does in those games I that look, look like, that guy's dead. No. Like, you just <laughs> you just kicked him full on in the face and his head twisted around. He's dead. <laughs> one, of, one, one, of things, one of the things I like is when you do the, the interrogations, though, because you're like, the shit in the pants, aren't they? You're holding onto him and the shit in the pants and they're going, right, I'll give you this information or whatever. And then... Yeah, then he just knacks him anyway. He's like, I lied. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much like, hey, well, I promised to kill you last. <laughs> it's like that. Yeah, that's right, man, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I know that whole scene, yeah. like, it's amazing. Okay. That's Commando, for those of you that don't know. Yeah, so let us, let us move on to, um, uh, to the new section then. We've got a few things. We've talked about the Witcher stuff, so we'll, uh, we'll get that out of the way. Skip it. So, Samsung. Yeah. Samsung are working on an 11K 5.7 inch mobile, mobile display. 11K. So, that's 11,000 by 6,000. This is, this is for virtual reality. That is the only reason I see this even, even existing. This is for virtual reality, yeah. They're basically, Samsung are the ones who provide Oculus with the screens. That Oculus big. have been pushing for a 5 yeah, a, a five inch, five and a half inch screen, basically. Like that, that size, yeah. basically, isn't it? It's maybe a bit to smaller be, than that. To be eleven k now. That's amazing, but I, can you imagine the hardware required to run a seventy-one megapixel game? I don't know. I, well, yeah. Hmm. This this yeah. is ridiculous. You, you're not wrong, but that that we 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 know that a technology. Is constantly moving. It's not going to be a problem at some point in the future. There's going to be some new CPU out that will be able to manage this. There's going to be some new GPU or, or some new GRAM out that's going to... It's going to have to be, but I think these screens are going to arrive before the technology catches up. You need at least 60 FPS. Te really, you need 75 or up to 90 um, FPS in a game to work to, for virtual reality to, to work correctly. Hmm. Um, the resolution is fine, but it's just... Uh, I'm almost like... Is the hardware going to be ready in time for that? I no, don't it think isn't. It's... Of course it isn't. It's, it's, a, it's a tech clickbait thing. It's that, That's what happens all the time, though. 4K screens or 4K-capable hardware. I've had a, um, a 4K-capable AV receiver for five or six years. Uh, uh, and it's been... It might be longer than that now, actually. It must be. And... 4K monitors are only recently starting to become more popular or, or more affordable at least anyway still mm. very expensive but you know but that will eventually 4K when this 11K monitor comes out for God's sake there's going to be there's going to be 4K monitors going to be 10 a penny remember when LCD monitors 1080p monitors came out mm. how expensive they were when they came it's, it's just I wouldn't how, mind just... See, I wouldn't mind seeing an 11K monitor but no, I think no no something that size no no because 4K I can hardly see the, the fucking text and my I can lose my cursor at least twenty five times. Yeah, a day. but obviously they'll, they'll design the UI is like Windows ten is designed for high definition displays now. Is that's just a case of we're still using displays which use pixels and use very small pixels hmm. or very small amounts of pixels. You know, an icon is sixteen by sixteen pixels, which on a four K monitor is going to be minuscule. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually thought when I got this monitor it'd be streaming out a lot more heat than it does, but it's actually quite good. It's actually probably... The screens are, are giving off less heat than my cheap 1080p monitors, put it that way. But mm. yeah, I, I, it's just one of those things, isn't it? They're, they're going to release this for a specific use, and that technology will then get made larger for bigger applications. That 11k monitor thing will be used for cinematics and films first. Yeah, but there's no mention of monitor. This is just for the mobile screen. So I think yeah. basically what's happened is Oculus have realised they've fallen behind, and so the might of Facebook and uh, Microsoft behind Oculus have helped push Samsung into trying to make these displays. Hmm. And that's where I think that's where Oculus is going to lie in a few years' time, is with these ultra high definition displays. There's anything that comes closest at the moment is the Starbreeze 5K display, and that's a bit shit. Right. 
I yeah, I still I'm I, the eleven K I think is going to be wonderful for virtual reality. If they can use that technology in an Oculus, then I think I would be much more sold in it uh, to, to to using it and getting involved, you know, in, in playing games with it. But you have the problem of rendering. Yeah. You have the problem of basically yeah, having to stack ten uh tight nexes on top of each other to get it to even come close or whatever. But then we're probably just going to get a new version of ATX, ATX Maxi or whatever. I don't even know if the, that exists yet. Um, there's a mini ATX, isn't there? A micro ATX, but there's no... I'm talking about... Um, form factors. Form factors in PCs. So we've, we have, we've had a standard for years. They've been tweaking that standard and adding new, new bits and bobs to it, but it's still at the case of where they need to... Yeah, 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 I don't know. Maybe they're just going to improve graphics cards. Well, I mean, they have better graphics cards, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, the, the the 980 that came out, the 980 Ti, which is now the flagship for um, Nvidia, the 980 that came out, that's almost silent in comparison to the last one. It doesn't generate anywhere near as much heat or power. Than but my that's last been yeah, that's did. been the push with these is to to reduce consumption and mm. heat because they were getting ridiculous. Because uh, yeah, they, and that's that's what will, will keep happening. And at some point, someone will invent something new uh, within some basement R and D department that will will revolutionise graphics cards and CPUs again. It's yeah. just it'll just it's always how it is. I'm not too worried. I'm I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm because... glad. I'm just. It just seems like the it, the, the display technology is overtaking the rendering capability of the machines at the moment. Which yeah. is slightly worrying. It's always been the other way around. But that's that. I'm going to say that is that's what's happened with 4K right now because I've got one 980 in my machine. Even a 980 Ti struggles to render games at 4K, and not many yeah. applications that I use actually support 4K. I don't. I haven't got this 4K monitor for a, for games. I'm still running things in 1080p, just scaled up. Um, but the 4K aspect is for my you know my normal work, and it's brilliant for that. But when it comes to 3D rendering, I think we're going to be quite a few years away from having decent graphics cards to render 4k let alone 11k mm. and 11 that's ridiculous isn't it it is yeah that's three times that's nearly three times 4k isn't it and it's going to be it's eight times uh eight times 1080p yeah I so think. yeah it's eight eight of those because i've said 4k is about two isn't it so <sighs> anyway yeah. right next eight. Um, Fallout 4 new uncut gameplay footage released. I, now, saw, I saw a link for this uh, earlier in the week. I haven't watched it because I don't. I don't want any more for Fallout 4 info. I'm happy. It, it, it wasn't uncut gameplay. Footage. No, it was. It was basically all the same. Like, yeah, it was all the same footage we've seen, just without the people talking in between it or over it. So right. there's nothing new there at all. It's okay. just a compendium of all that footage. Uh, what I will remember is because it's a YouTube thing. Nearly every single comment that I scrolled down on was completely negative. It's like everyone went on there to watch a video and be like, this is shit, Fallout 1 and 2 were better, where's all the RPG elements gone? It's just like, why would you all come in here and watch this video just to say nasty things about it? Just fuck off. Why would you it's even create a YouTube login for that? Well, actually, they're not YouTube logins. I mean, they're Google Plus. Google Plus. You have to have a Google account to be on the internet these days, don't you? What I will say about Fallout 4 is that it's, it is getting more exciting to me like when i first saw the the first trailer i thought it looked shit it's multiplayer as well isn't it it did is i get it? that i think it is i don't think it is is it not oh no so. no no i'm talking out my ass you're right it's it's now that you can build bases and stuff but i, I don't know why i, I the, thought, um, thought it was i think the mobile game you know, the base building game you can do is that multiplayer elements that you can share stuff with other people that play it or something you know that the shelter, the Fallout shelter sim that you've got, where you actually manage a shelter, that might have multiplayer elements in it. I'm, sure I'm pretty sure Fallout about... Four isn't. I see, it's the kind of game that I don't want. It's the same with the Elder Scrolls. I don't want it to be multiplayer. I want it to be single player, yeah. like deliberately so. Don't make it. Don't shoot oh, uh... one in a multiplayer into what is supposed to be a single player experience. You want to feel special in the world, don't you? You want the world to be yours to explore and for you to be potentially the. The, the the most important person in that world. Yeah, you you kind of don't want to share it with anybody else, fucking around with it and me making it not as cool for you in a lot of ways. And I don't but, have a problem with games that are built for that purpose, or having a multiplayer mode that is completely separate to the normal game modes. Mm. But then, See, it, then it's dev time, isn't it? it? Goes into that as well. Terraria has done that quite well, I think, because they've given you the option to have 
it's it's quite open in that you could run a dedicated we run a dedicated server that's completely private to just us but you could create a public dedicated server if you wanted to or you can complete you can now integrate with your steam friends and you can invite friends into you if you want them to but there has to be Unless you're running the T-Shock server, which allows you to protect areas of your world, so you built a big base, you don't want people to destroy it. Basically, yeah, um, you'd, you'd just give it coordinates, and you'd say these these cannot be modified by these groups of people. Um, mm. Normal Terraria server stuff is you just have to trust people that come into your game. I mean, the amount of times Steve's come into our our game and thrown a bomb in the middle of the base and exp just destroyed <laughs> whole portions of it, and lava started flowing all over the place. It's like, oh, not on purpose. He's just accidentally clicked something. He threw a bomb instead of a grenade. Sure, so, right, a number awesome. of times. He's done it twice. So, so. Mm. Filled me once and all that. Yeah. He says it's fine. Didn't he? But mm. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. So okay, um, Batman. Arkham Knight patch is planned for August, apparently, and this is planned for August in quotation marks. The developer has now come out, well, come out last week and said that they are, that it's a priority, there's a lot of work, they're working with all other partners, they're trying to get it out there. Hurry the fuck up then. Come on, just, just get, let me play, let me continue to play the game, please. That's all I want. What a royal fuck up for them to have released the PC version in that state, though. Someone has to be held responsible for that. Surely. Such a, well, the the studio that ported it will will have been well and truly sacked, I imagine. Yeah, but not just that. There, there's obviously some playtesters. Obviously, the company that that, that some commissioned the port well. will have played the game and realised it was fucked, and still went on and released it. But it all depends it was... on how how they've managed that. If they've been silent about it and said, "Yep, it's up, we're, it's good, we're good to go." All the well, raised issues uh, and the publishing team have just went right. Let's go. Let's get it out do there. Do you do you remember um, when Arkham Asylum was first being talked about? And this is relevant. The game was delayed, I think, for about. I, I could be talking up my ass. It was for a few months. Nine is in my head, and I remember there was some buzz about it. People going, "Oh, there's this new, you know, Batman game. It's not related to a film. It's got its own visual style. Is it going to be any good? They're an unknown developer. It looks interesting, but will it be crap? Is it going to be this? And there was a lot of buzz about it. Then it got delayed, and that created a bit more buzz. So like, oh, this game's been delayed. You know, this game that no one even cared about has now been delayed. Then it started to become anticipated. Then it came out and was great. The point was is that Rocksteady didn't want that game to be released until it was completely ready to be released. They were like, and because it wasn't a lot of pressure on them at the time, because the game was a, as a new IP, mm -hmm. I know Batman's not a new IP, yeah, yeah, yeah. but Ar the yeah. Arkham game was a new thing, new everything. The way they were doing it was their own style that hadn't been done with Batman before. It was They were allowed the time to do it, and then this game, I don't know, but I, I haven't heard about this game being delayed at all. It seems like this game more or less came out when they said it was going to come out. Uh, well, obviously, it's published by Warner Brothers, isn't it? I believe yeah. it's the publisher. Um, the Warner Brothers obviously went and made Arkham Origins with their own little studio without Rocksteady as a sort of prequel. So they're clearly wanting to make money off this franchise, and I can understand that. It's their, they own it. It's part of their thing. But yes, it it sounds to me like this game should have just been delayed, and I'm not sure if it's the publisher's responsibility. Remember, no, it is the publisher. The publisher is the one that pushes it out. It's basically it's a it's akin to management in in my industry, for example. Management do mm. not fully understand development and just want things out there, and they only see are the bottom lines and the you know we need it done so, now. This is the date, so why isn't it ready? So my point is, is that if people that are fans of this franchise should, should try and remember that possibly and say, look, Rocksteady themselves, I'm not saying that they're perfect or anything, I'm sure they've got the fair share of faults and whatever. They probably, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, because the way they did the first game, the pedigree of the quality of the games that they've actually produced in these like three Arkham games, which I consider to be very high, is not. I wouldn't put it on them. I would say it's probably a game that was, they told it has to be released on this date. We just don't give a shit if the PC version works or not. Because the PC market won't make as much money. That'll be what it was specifically well, they, about that. I don't, I, I don't even remember. I mean, is Arkham... It is now, but it wasn't even advertised much as a PC game. The I, first I don't Arkham even game. think it was initially it released like, as one. It felt like a console game. It was very much marketed in that manner uh, and, you know, put forward in that way. Uh, so this, the third one being on a PC as well, it just seems yeah. like they just said they had to do it out of obligation rather than wanting to do it. You know what? I mean, obviously we're not privy to all of the um, the conversations that goes on behind closed doors, but I imagine this will probably mean that if a new 
I mean, I know they're not doing it. They're not supposedly doing a third one anyway. If a new one does come out, or Warner Brothers decide to do more games of this ilk for any reason with another studio, maybe they probably won't do a PC release because they'll have been burned by it. They'll probably go back to just console releases, I imagine. But I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know the technical details behind it. But it, it will be a management thing. It will be a, a mismanagement on part of the studio that ported it. Or it will be mismanagement or, or misunderstanding on the t in in regards to the publisher themselves not understanding that this game needs to be properly tested. It hasn't been tested on a range of hardware. We've got a we've got a, a gold disc and that's it. You know we're happy. It's a shame though because I just I think the game is very good and it, it, the fact that the PC port is terrible and doesn't work is is I don't even play it on PC but it's sad as a general thing about gaming in general. That a genuinely really really good game has had to have had its reputation damaged it in also, the eyes of a lot of people because of that. It also looks better as well on PC in general. Well, apparently there's low low texture issues, and that's one of the things that the that gamers have complained about. But it still looks very good. I imagine it's just using the same textures as the PlayStation and the the Xbox releases. I've got to be honest. But PC gamers expect to be able to run things at the highest quality when they've got the highest level of of hardware. Yeah. I, I have to be honest, I am I am a bit upset at the moment that the, the latest games that are coming out, I'm talking about Witches, Witches and Arkham Knights, etc., that are... I'm running them at full settings with... No, okay, it's not the best graphics card you can get, but it was the best graphics card you could get when I got my graphics card, and it still doesn't run properly. at and, and, and this is games without major issues. You know, like Witcher Three. Witcher Three is okay. It's got some optimization problems, but it's still not running. I need two graphics cards. I need to spend five hundred pounds of graphics. I need to spend about a grand on graphics cards alone just to get it working in full settings on a PC. It just sounds crazy to me. Don't fucking release that tech if it's not ready for a single graphics card at the top top end. Do, am I am I just ranting here, or do you agree? Am I? I can see where you're coming from. I can understand. Because with the PC thing, one of the things that's always stood out to me is the fact that it seems to require that you do have to buy new bits to stick into your PC quite a lot. And these individual like graphic cards aren't cheap, are they? You don't have to. Um, well, usually, you're, like this well, graphics card I've got now, I mean, the last one I had it for three or four years, longer than that maybe. And that's probably the, you know, that's generally the run between console releases, isn't it? That's actually those mm. ten, 10 years between one. PS2 and 3 I think but, um, There's a bit of crossover usually Yeah yeah but I mean I I still expect this card to run the current games at full res at full spec and it always has been, generally always has been the case uh, you know if you want to get two graphics cards that's just because you want that extra bit of push you know you want that extra bit of oomph in the game or you I, 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 I don't know I just I mean I've even turned anti-aliasing off on some games just because I thought that move was going to help things, and it doesn't seem to help it that much, you know? It's like, come on, sort your shit out. you got more flexibility, haven't you? you got, you, that's the key to PC gaming, is it? You can, you can have more control over your experience and but choose if, to configure it. Yeah, but if I need to spend a grand on two graphics cards to run the latest game with the highest settings, it just doesn't make sense to me that we'd have to spend that much money when we've never really needed to spend that much money in the past unless we wanted the extra push, you know? Well, isn't this Steve's argument as to, to the inoptimal nature of the new Batman game? Well, ba Batman, was, well, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually referring more to Witcher. It's a wonderful game, but I have to turn certain settings off in order to get it running at 60 FPS. And yeah. that, la that extra lag does bother me sometimes when I'm fighting a boss or something like that, fighting an enemy. But, I mean, the Arkham Knight, that's fucked. That's, I don't think that's... I, I still disagree that it's a optimization issue. Excuse me. The port has been done badly. It's not been tested properly. They're, they're seriously fucked it. That's, that's what that is. It's nothing to do with the fact that it's an 80 gig game and it's got 8K textures and all that other stuff. Those things should be supported really by these this day's hardware. If I had four graphics cards, I'm sure I'd be fine. Actually, no. Actually, no. With Arkham Knight, if I had four graphics cards, it wouldn't make a fucking difference because it's shit. It's fucked. That's the problem. It is utterly <laughs> fucked. It reminds me very much of um, when Halo was first ported to PC. And I remember uh, it I didn't my play Gearbox, it, I... and it was really, really inoptimal. It was ran like a dog. 
They have to do so many uh, optimizations to console games, or they have done historically, to get them working on consoles. I don't understand, considering the architectures for Xbox anyway, especially, are similar to PC, I don't understand why it's so difficult, I have to be honest. I don't, I don't get it. I'm not, I'm not a, a full-on, like, lower-level games programmer that understands how they all ha all the hardware works. Anyway, I can see you're bored. Let's move on. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Sam and I's favourite so show of the moment. Uh, Co-creator Rob McKennell. Mc I can never say his second name. Uh, I think it's I think it's pronounced McKellen. McKellenny. 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 That'll do. Rob McKellenny. Mac. It's always Mac. sunny in Philadelphia. Um, cho has has um, been chosen to direct the Minecraft movie. Yeah, I, I just I saw that pop up and I was. This was literally happened last night. It was confirmed apparently via Twitter that he'd basically tweeted at Mojang to say, you know, as a confirmation of, of taking on the job, he said, "Let's create something wonderful together." I think is what he said. Now, what intrigues me about it is just how out of left field the decision this seems to be. Like you're making a Minecraft movie about which we know nothing, as far as I can tell. No, I can't no. see any. There's no. Is it about Minecraft being made, or is it a story set in Minecraft world? It'll be a story set. It'll be like a Lego movie. It, I, I it would think look it's shit on a big screen. That though, wouldn't it? I think and it's going to shit a cinema with these blocky fucking textures. It looked terrible. I think it's going to be a cross between Tron and like War Games. Um, War Games. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, not War Games. Another Tron. one. I think another one. Yeah, well, you think reckon... someone's going to go into the Minecraft world? Yeah, yeah. sucked into the Minecraft world. I, I reckon but, that's it. Oh, oh, it's going to be just going to be a massive Hololens promotion. Like big time Hololens promotion, it's gonna st uh, and it's gonna be aimed at kids as well. Of course, sure it will be. Be. that's the kids. main uh, main market, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. They they picked an interesting guy to do it because I know that he was like the, the the driving force between getting that show made. It's always sunny. Uh, obviously, he's, he's the you know the co creator. He's like he's executive producer. Blah blah. blah all that really important job roles. He was like of oh, the other two guys are main as well, but he's like the main guy that made that show happen. Obviously, a writer as well. So it's interesting that they picked a, a, you know, a comedy actor, writer, producer guy to direct an animated, what I presume to be animated, quite a film for kids. It's an interesting choice. I'm, I'm intrigued he's by quite, it. He's quite. He, he likes the the non PC stuff as well, though, doesn't he? The non politically correct. A lot of the content of <laughs> Sunny in Philadelphia. I don't think is. they're gonna. Yeah, I don't think they're going to do that stuff on the Minecraft. Well, he also film. likes the freedom as well. I've watched a few of the uh, the extras for Philadelphia, and he he seems mm. to to exude this. I like the fact that the the producers have given us all this free, given us all this freedom. I like the fact that we can we've got we've got flexibility here, and I don't think you'd get that with a Minecraft movie. Surely, he'd have to direct it's it in like a very certain way. It's, yeah, it's it's the equivalent of you know when Sam Raimi first came on to do Spider Man. It was this guy who'd done like these crazy, ridiculous like horror films and weird movies when he was very much had his own thing to say. And they were like, "Now I'm going to make a really big budget like studio property that has got a lot of people invested. I'm going to go and tow the tow the company line, as it were, yeah. um, by making this movie." So I'm interested in it. It's strange. I'm not invested in Minecraft. I've never even played the game. It doesn't. The central idea of it doesn't actually appeal to me as as a game that I want to play, so I've never bothered to pick it up and play it. I just thought it was a weird, weird choice and an interesting bit of news. It's worth mentioning, that's all. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because it's, it's, it's odd. Yeah. No, I, I don't know if he's, directed, if he's directed much. I know he's like a writer and all this kind of stuff, but I don't know if he directs a lot of the show as well. I think he's more like a producer, writer, and actor. I don't know about directing and such. And as for directing an animated movie, I don't even know how you do that. If you're not an animator yourself, how do you direct an animated movie? You just say, I want that to look better. That more good, please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do that, but there you go. Uh, right, so we, we're running we're running low on news this week. There's not that actually been too much that we've, uh, we've picked up on. So uh, there was... Uh, how to beat your Steam library? I saw a link for this earlier on today. I thought it was quite cool. Just a load of statistics for statistics geeks. If you're into that kind of thing, um, I'm most interested in my playtime in this. Okay, what's yours? So, Killing Floor has got 194 hours on it. That's the top one. Really? Next, oh, God, the first next, Killing Floor. Yeah, yeah. And then next to that is Left 4 Dead 2 with 191 hours. So, I've spent nearly 400 hours playing zombie games. Uh, repetitive zombie games let me add as yeah. well 
Now, my my top games here, I actually, first of all, I put in the name Spiky, which is my surname everywhere, and it come up with some crazy foreign name that I'd never heard of in my life before. And I, I was confused for a bit, and I, my my Steam name is actually Bid the Dog, so um, Terraria is my top played game with 203 hours. Skyrim's followed with 187 after that, and then Sid Meier's Civilization Five is 65 hours after that. And then Borderlands oh, 2, I've got 60, 63 hours in Borderlands 2. How the hell have I managed that? 100, 146 in that. Uh, we, we kicked the shit out yeah, of that Yeah, I game. didn't we... play all the DLC with you, though. What about yeah, uh, Oblivion? Did... Would that not be quite high for you? Or did you not get that on Steam? Is that not a thing? No, it's it's on on Steam, Steam wasn't no. around then. Uh, Steam I've wasn't even my... a thing, Ox... then, was it? XCOM yeah, Enemy got... Unknown, yes. 44 hours. Shadowrun Returns, 40 hours. Dead Island, 34 hours, for God's sake. Uh, Grand Theft Auto yeah. 5, I've played 30 hours of it. I could go through this all day. Prison Architect, that's there. Dishonored in my top 10. Saints Row It's amazing, actually, when you look at it. I've, pl I've probably played games like Deus Ex more than some of these, though, because that is yeah. obviously isn't in Steam, but I've played it through a vast number of times. I'd love to mm. see how many hours I've put in Quake 2. Or Final Fantasy 7. And mm. probably could work out how many hours I've put in Final Fantasy 7, but... Quick two, no idea. I couldn't because it varies wildly. Whenever I play it, it varies wildly depending on what my aim is when I play Final Fantasy VII. I said I've got it down to 11 hours, I think it was, is my quickest play time. Um, but I've, I've also played That's it for... fast. I've also, yeah, I've also played it for 70... Um, 72, I think, is my max. Something ridiculous well, my, like my that. first game, and Steve's is the same, uh, we got it so that the counter maxed out at 99 <laughs> hours. Nice. It just turns red and doesn't count anymore. Yeah, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get that. I was, uh... They didn't understand that anyone could ever play for but more that than was, 100 hours. That was playing, that was to get the golden ch chocobo, chocobo, whatever you want chocobo. to call them. Uh, that was to get the golden ch 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 chocobo, um, which it takes <laughs> most of the bloody game up. Uh, yeah. Trying to bloody breathe it's that. It's a pain in the ass, that one. It's a right pain in the ass. And getting all of the... Well, actually, after you've got the golden chocobo, you can go and get the uh, the mine materia and the Knights of the Round. Uh, actually, is mime? Can you get well, mime I was going to say, what does get? What's the advantage of having the golden chocobo other than to be? It a gets you to an island that you can't get to any other way. Yeah, you can basically so fly island. over the island with the sky, the high wind. Sorry, um, which is a big. But you can't land on it. Blimp. It's not a blimp, is it? It's like it's, a. It's an airship. So airship. It's like a, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't get to that bit. Where you get the high wind? But I know Jesus Christ! Mythalos played 185 hours of, on Binding of Isaac. I haven't, I haven't even played, played that, that game yet. yet. Is it, wait, yeah. which, one's the, which one's that? It's the Edward... Um, oh, the guy who did uh, Meet Super Meat Edward Boy Pond, originally. Uh, that David, sounds right. Yeah, yeah that sounded it's about right. It's the Binding right, of right. Isaac. Yeah, the Binding of Isaac, the weird one where you're like a fetus or something. Yeah. It, or you're fighting on the fetuses or you're, something. You're, fighting, you're a fetus yeah. fighting your way out of the womb or something, but it's demonised womb or something like that. But something it's, like it's that. all procedurally yeah, yeah, generated, okay. so it's constantly... It, 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 I don't know if it sounds like it appeals to me because you're just in different rooms fighting different things. But it's another Smash TV style thing, a isn't it? A lot of people really, really rate it, so it's one of those games that I should really play at some point. It's probably very addictive if he's put 185 hours into it. I've, well, thinking about it, I've probably put more hours into WoW than anything else in my entire gaming career. You know, I'll put more into EverQuest. I'll put thousands of hours into that. Myth uh, sorry, Corpse has said he's got 1,204 hours in Dota 2. Wow. Jesus. Jesus Christ! How long yeah. has that been out for? That game, just that interest. Uh, How many years, years? we talking about there? You know, two years, I'd say, something like that. If that, on, I'm going to tell you what I've got in in Dota two. Oh, no, twenty data. minutes. I've got it. I've no data. It. <laughs> it's something like twelve minutes. Screen. It literally is something like twelve minutes. Can't find it anyway. It's, um, the it's game a... with with some time on it that I played the least of is Real Mist, which I played zero point zero three hours of. That's a short time. That's, Does that mean yeah. that you basically put it on and went? I don't want to play this and turned it off again. Yeah, I think so. Farming Simulator. I wouldn't even know <laughs> because I because I like to play through games, games that I enjoy. I play through them again and again. Yeah, cumulative hours that I've put in over the years, you know, things like I can't, I've played Ocarina of Time a lot of times through. I played through the Metal Gear games, all of them, you know, as as a sequence quite a few times. Same with the Legacy of Kane and that. I just sort of going through them. I like the. Uh, but I feel like doing it again. I go. I'll just start that series again and go all the way through. I like the. I like the whole 
um, total amount of consecutive current playtime would be one month, two weeks, four days, 14 hours. But things like if you wanted to complete everything in your Steam box, you could con play the game consecutively for nine months, three days, and 20 hours. Play everything in your state. And that's without sleeping, basically. Yeah, <laughs> you that's. Just kept playing it. Without sleeping or eating or doing anything else other than this playing is, games, this is unrealistic. Because sorry, not unrealistic. This is this is misleading because this make this actually makes that figure look realistic. It looks like I could complete every game in my Steam library, but I never will. I never ever will. When yeah, because that's saying that's saying twenty four hours a day. On a good day, when you get a good session in, what are you looking at there? Maybe four hours. Sometimes if you get a good more gaming that, session. Thought... If oh, I really good let, let's, say, let's say optimistically if you get a good day and you've got nothing to do and you happen to have a good old session let's say eight hours you've got a really good day where you basically spend the good proportion of your day that you're not doing anything else than playing the game it's probably eight hours would you say on an average like if, you're not gonna you're not gonna have many times when you're gonna get more than that you know are you yeah, eight, 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 yeah, I'd say eight. Kind of honestly, eight, honestly, yeah. most of your play sessions are gonna be less than that, aren't they? Realistically, like in real life, like you it, don't it, spend. When it, Eight hours, five days a week playing games. No, but when I've when I've pl when I've really enjoyed games, I've normally completed them in one or two sittings. So that's yeah. normally kind of eight to ten hours per sitting. I, I actually I say yeah, I, I don't think I, I can do that because I'm a, I am when I enjoy a game extensive. I, I I go for the completionist. I want to do everything in that game. It's like I mean I don't know how much I played The Witcher Three because that's on GOG, so I think it's about seventy odd hours now. Um, it's nice to look at the pie charts as well because. I have quite a, 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 a distributed lot when it comes to the genre that I play. My action genre seems to be the most, but then I've also got quite heavy Same RPG here. stuff. Um, but if I look um, at... Action and strategy. And the reason I've got strategy, I've got a lot of time in um, subcom Forged Alliance. Yeah, simulation, strategy, uh, action. Actually, when I go to the completionist tab, simulation and strategy and action are the three highest. Where, but if I go on my main games that I play, actually, no, it's all fairly equal. Indeed, I've got I would have thought 116 hours in Supreme Commander. What does what does Terraria come under then? If that's not indie, um, that's, um, RPG action RPG. It may uh, be. Sandbox adventure crafting survival. What does it tags. say that? All oh, right, okay. That's it. It's on um, Steam. Anyway. Yeah, anyway, we talked about that longer than I thought we were going to, but it's 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 cool looking at little stats like that. I uh, it's cool. yeah yeah. Oh shit! Just close the document. Someone take over quickly. Uh, well, the uh, next thing that, that was the document was no, 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 sorry. Ah. Next page. Uh, there's, well, there was a link to um, some new Deus Ex concept art. Man, well, Mankind Divided, I'm guessing it's meant to be. It says Mankind concept art. But... Oh, whatever, yeah, Mankind Divided. I watched divided. a gameplay video of this, and it does look very nice. I've got to admit, I'm, it does I'm look very nice. I'm going to be all nice. over this shit. I, I love anything Deus Ex. I've enjoyed every single game. I don't care what you say. I, I, loved... I just don't believe that they're going to deliver what the video is showing. Why? Well, I mean... What 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 didn't they deliver in Mankind apart from the boss fights, which were shit? I didn't what? even get to a boss fight. I just got oh, bored of it. it just... You're a dick, though. You're a dick. You don't even give games a chance, you. Didn't Chris say he was going to be nice to me on the show? I did not say that. I never said that. Show. I don't think he did. I said he wasn't going to have a go at you as much as he did in the pre-show bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I had a proper rant. He did pre-show show ripped me a new one, didn't he? Yeah, he did. <laughs> um, he just said he wasn't um, going to do that. He didn't say yeah, so, I don't know. I can't. I can't say what it was I didn't like about it. it just didn't didn't grab me like the other Deus Ex. It games. felt very, very similar to the original Deus Ex to me. That it just felt like an updated, better looking game with with actually I thought better controls than the first game. Fair enough, they simplified a few little bits and bobs, but it was still fundamentally the same kind of feeling. Um, it could have been played more action orientated than the previous games. You could I go think through what... it shooting fuck out of everything, but. I think what I feel is that a lot of games now push, uh, they push some unique mechanic that doesn't have a lot of weight to it, but is very cool. Like I remember being really drawn in by the um, the, the the sweep mechanic in Thief, where you kind of jump between the shadows to get to somewhere. Yeah. Uh, that looks really cool. That'll be really good to play. That the game was shit, 
but mm. the game was sold entirely on the graphics and on those those little kind of sound bitey moments that could stick into trailers and stick into hype the hype machine before the game comes out. When you watched when you watched the cinematic of Thief, for example, yeah, I remember that even opening windows that that looks really cool when you saw the cinematics, but. At the actual reality of having to open up five million windows in that game to get through <laughs> <laughs> to get through it, is, yeah. it uh... Whereas, whereas you can't easily demonstrate what's so good about the original Deus Ex, <laughs> but it has a lot of depth in it. Sorry, we've got a we've got a freeze frame of you, Lou, and it's uh, it's beautiful. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna save that. You look like a muppet. Do I? Yeah. Should I turn my uh, video on awesome. and off again? Oh, go for it. Why not? Um. So yes, next one then. So we've got Star Citizen creator Chris Roberts responds to delay concerns, etc. He's revealed that there is $85 million in funding that has gone into this game so far. Now he says funding. What the fuck isn't it ready then? Yeah, he, calls, he says funding, but I don't know if that's just crowdfunding or there's additional resource. They've, they've went up from five employees, which I imagine was still quite ambitious back then to something like 250 employees now as well he's, he's basically denying that they're doing too much feature creep he, th he says that everything they're putting into the game is is making the game better um i want to let lou loose on this one because you have a fair few opinions about this don't you um I just don't think the game's ever going to be released personally. I just I think I've got the same concerns that a lot of these people have got, which is that there's a lot of money going to it and a lot of hype and a lot of really beautiful concept art and renderings and stuff. But so all you can do in the game, as far as I can tell, is sh there's, there's like a shitty dogfighting module and you can walk around your ships that you've paid real money for. Hmm. Well, Mythalos, Mythalos just said, so essentially they're a AAA studio now. Yeah. They are. They've got four, they four or five studios across the world apparently now. So it, it concerns me that it, that's happened, I have to be honest, because it's okay having a vision. I mean, I would love my game to be funded and have more resources and more staff to be able to do what I want it to do. But I've got a very clear vision of what that is that I want it to do. I, it'd be lovely that I could actually make it do that, but I can't, you know? But that's not the point here. They've just went over the top with it. They've got all this money and all this funding but what what are they going to produce for, with that money? It's like the ultimate manifestation of kind of pandering to the hype machine. Listen to what the audience wants and giving them some videos or some pictures of what it is that they want and talking about lots of pie-in-the-sky stuff that you're going to do with the game without actually doing anything that's a game. Hmm. Mm. I think so, it's well, so easy to sell that stuff to people now. Just say procedural and, you know, I've got a procedural universe and people will buy your game. You know, there was a point when this game was funded, when um, Elite Dangerous was also funded, where everyone was clamouring for a space exploration game and loads of them kind of got funded at the same time. And I know, you know, I've played Elite Dangerous. I've played it for quite a few hours and there's not a lot you can do in it. It's well, not... We also we also had the the whole very at, game. At similar times. We also had the whole uh, crowdfunding thing was kicking off big time for a lot of titles, not just not just the, the space exploration ones, but there was also the two D space exploration ones that were coming out at the time. The infinite universes, you know, procedurally generated planets, etc. But different, and all of those had quite a lot of money thrown at them as well. But this seems to be ridiculous. Eighty-five yeah, this is million dollars. It's it's a lot to, to say that there isn't really anything properly to show for it yet, is there? There's no game that you can buy and, and play. Like I say, there's a dogfight module, which is not very good. And an FPS module as well. It can't play that yet. No, but it's still coming, apparently, it, and that's one of the things It's coming. There's loads of things that are coming, but the, the point, all though, you've got at the, what you can play at the moment is you can walk around your ship in a hangar, or you can play a really kind of poorly executed dogfight module what you can play these you, have you actually you got can't, a... that's yeah those are two things you can I play the dogfight module realize. has got like a few maps and the um the hangar is basically the same hangar and you've got your spaceship parked in it and you can get in it and walk around it and have you look got at it, it. no I've, I've watched uh greg play it greg got it all right okay okay so it's like they're delivering very little, but promising quite a lot, and I don't think they could ever deliver what it is that they're promising. Because they're just... They're, it's someone someone on a forum goes, oh, wouldn't it be great if you could do this? Like, you, you could 
land on any planet you want and walk around and explore the entire planet. And it seems like with Star Citizen, it's like, yeah, we're going to do that. Next year, you'll be able to go down to any planet and walk around anywhere and explore the whole planet. I hope and, they prove uh, you wrong. Elite Dangerous, Elite Dangerous is doing the same thing. Oh, yeah, you'll be able to walk outside your ship. You'll be able to land on planets and stuff. The reality is that that is an incredibly difficult thing to do and to do in any kind of interesting way. We've already seen that you look at um, No Man's Sky and already from these videos you can see that it's probably not going to be that interesting what and you can do in it. it looks, when you look at it, the scale of No Man's Sky, actually, even though it's procedural and infinite, blah 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 it also feels like it's quite small. To me, when I've yeah. been watching any of the videos, any of the gameplay stuff, it feels like... Maybe it's what you just said. Maybe it's that it doesn't feel like there's much to do. I, I don't know. I'm surprised that people haven't learned from Spore. Spore came out God knows how many years ago now. 2008, maybe? Spore um, had an interesting mechanic, though. I mean... It did, but it didn't feel like a big game. It was procedurally generated. No. You have infinite variation in your your um, monsters or your, your animals and the planets and everything else, but it felt like a very small game, like a... Each section, tight. each section was a mini game essentially that you, you yeah. could play for a while, and then you you evolved, didn't you? And then you got into the next section. But I still enjoyed that. But when you got to certain points, like the, I think it was the tribal stage or whatever, it felt like it went on forever doing the same bloody thing. And I didn't get to the galactic side because uh, I've got it now, but I didn't have it at the time. Uh, creatures for the Amiga. Oh, what a mention! Oh, you remember that, everybody? Anybody? I've seen it. I've not played it. That was um, it was obviously two D, but it was a beautiful looking game. But you you controlled creatures. It, if I remember rightly, it was um, it was like the King Arthur's world or the um, uh, what were they Vi the Vikings? If you remember the Vikings, <laughs> King, King Arthur and Vikings. Is no, this some no, creep, the, crazy the, crossover. Two different games. Sorry, King Arthur's World was a SNES game that I played. I think it might have been on other platforms as well. All oh, right, okay. But you could the control. Vikings. You, could, you know the Vikings. You could control four different Vikings or Lost three Vikings. different Vikings. Yeah, three Lost Vikings, Vikings. That was yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but it was, uh, if I remember rightly, it was similar to that, and you could basically control these creatures. But you saved creatures from being killed um, on. On machinery and stuff. If I remember rightly, I mean, I'm sure Corpse will. Uh, I think he's talking about a different game because that sounds like creatures on the Commodore 64, where you saved them from a torture chamber. I think it's the same game. I think the creatures that uh, the Corpse on about was more like a a, a Sim style game, a 2D Sim style game. No, no. What I'm looking at but here is are... exa exactly what I'm talking about. Sims. It was yeah the. I think it, it might not even be called Creatures. But the one that I'm looking at, I just Googled Creatures, and that's not the it's game I think that... Torture Trouble. Creatures 2, Torture Trouble. Yeah, that was... that. These are both different games. The Creatures was oh. a, a platform game. Confusing um, and me. The, tor the Torture Chambers were uh, like mini-games within that. Creatures 2 was all kind of mini-games. Right, okay, yeah, sorry. So I'm getting confused with the uh, Commodore 64 version how old i am all right um so steam's well, I, the, there's a, a last article this is another steam analysis article but this is interesting for anybody who's a game developer uh, again something i found uh, recently but it kind of gives you a it's the guy who created a, a service called steam spy he's written an article that just basically goes into detail about this is actually what happens on steam so instead of like thinking you know what marketing is why don't you just actually look at the facts and it's quite an interesting read if you care about sales figures and um for example there's something like i think there's, i think it's something like 11.3 million people in in russia uh, buy games on steam but they will only it'll only be like two percent if you don't localize your game to russia um, of your sales will go to Steam, whereas it'll it'll rise to something like eight percent. If you there's lots of little statistics in here like that. Anyway, so I'll paste it into chat if anybody's interested in that kind of thing. It's a it's a good good read. I uh, I enjoyed it, um, and I think that's it for today. Yep. So thank you very much for everybody who has been in chat and been uh, vocal today. Next week is a very special episode. So tell your friends, tell your mum, tell your brothers, tell your dogs. Uh, it's our one year anniversary. I actually thought it was in a few weeks time, but Lou's put me right today. Uh, it's not episode 52 because we've had a few weeks off. Uh, God bless us. Not too many though. I think we're on, what is this, 48? We're on 47. 47. So 48. So we've had, what, four weeks off in, uh, 
in a year. In a year, and and a couple of those were all around the same time because I was really really busy. I think. Um, but yeah, so next week, get everyone, get some spamming. Come on, give us some, get us more than four or five people in the chat. I noticed that another person has just joined uh, just as we're about to close the show. Uh, thanks, thanks for for turning up. But um, so. Was- Come, come along next Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. So this is two hours. If, you, if you're not local to the UK, it's two hours ago from now. Bookmark it for next Wednesday. <laughs> come along. Follow us on Twitter, forward slash Resonance Arcade. We announce all the shows an hour or, well, half an hour or so before the uh, show starts. And facebook.com forward slash Resonance Arcade if Lou bothers to have ever updated it. And Google Plus and YouTube forward slash Resonance Arcade uh, where we upload all our videos. What? What are you smiling at? What? You... <laughs> Nothing. I'm the smiling smile of happy. The, the <laughs> smile of guilt. Anyway, so if we're not playing Terraria for the next seven days, then um, we shall see you next Wednesday for our one-year anniversary. Goodbye, everyone. Until next time.